Welcome to the YouTube studio. Okay, so firstly, this studio tour video is actually episode five in a longer renovation series. So if you wanna see how not only the exterior and shell of this studio was put together, but also how we've been renovating the house we own and moved into last year, then I'll leave a link to the full playlist up in the cards and down in the description below. It's been a super fun series to put together, so you should definitely check it out. Now, when I first moved into this space back in December of 2020, it was just a blank canvas. We'd obviously painted the walls white. I'd had some light gray carpet laid to help out with the audio. But aside from that, there was nothing else to it. Initially, we just moved all of my gear and computer equipment in. We bought a few shelving units and placed them on one of the walls. But it was just a large, open, and if I'm being honest, kind of dull room. And so after a month or two, it really dawned on us that this space needed some serious thought put into it to not only transform it into a proper studio, but also to maximize the space that was available. Now, the key components required of this studio space were firstly, that it needed to be an amazing space that I could film in at any time. But then I obviously needed my editing station set up so that I could complete the projects that I was filming. But on top of that, after a bit of time living in our house, we realized that thanks to me essentially eliminating the garage storage area that was this studio before the reno, we'd need to create some sort of storage space in the studio as well. And then on top of all of that, I wanted this space to actually look nice. And so after many months of planning and reorganizing and going back to the drawing board, moving furniture in and then moving it back out, finally a space that originally looked like this transformed into this. Now for the first time in any space that I've lived or worked in, I really planned the interior design of this studio unlike any space before. I had a bunch of mood boards for the different corners and walls of this room. I had a Photoshop document that had a bird's eye view of everything I was planning on bringing into the studio. And that's because it's one thing to have a nice large space to work in all the time, but having it actually look nice and feel like a space that I wanna to go to each day and spend hours working in, well, that was something that I wanted to prioritize as well. And in fact, part of the planning process actually involved watching a few classes on Skillshare, who are funnily enough, also today's video sponsor. One of those classes in particular was one that I actually mentioned a little while ago on the channel called Interior Decorate Like a Boss. I found this class really helpful when thinking about how to design this space and lay it out effectively, particularly when you consider that at the start, this space was just four empty walls, a couple of window sills, and aside from that, nothing much more. Now on top of that class by Rose Sprinkle, not only are there a huge collection of other amazing interior design classes on Skillshare, but they actually have tens of thousands of classes in a whole host of other categories like graphic design, video editing, cinematography, plus a stack more. And what's great is that you get access to any class on their platform for just one monthly price. Now, because they're sponsoring today's video, Skillshare are offering a free one month trial to the first 1000 people who use my link down in the description below. So definitely make sure that you check it out and get learning. Okay, but all of that planning was really instrumental in helping me to decide which bits of decor I wanted to bring in, what pieces of furniture I needed to buy, and even though some small components changed throughout the process, having a set plan like this before going out and purchasing a bunch of furniture is something that I can highly recommend doing and I'll definitely be doing it again in the future. Okay, so with that out of the way, it's now time to really show off this studio. I really liked Chris Howe's studio tour that he posted nearly a year ago now. If you haven't seen that, I'll leave a link to it below, but I'm gonna structure mine in a similar way. We'll take a look at each of the different sections in this studio space and discuss why they've been set up that way. And so to kick us off, we have what I'm calling the set. And this has been perhaps the biggest thing to transform since first moving into this space. Now, before we moved into this house, but after we had kids, I was always forced to film in a spare bedroom that I'd converted into my office. And because this spare bedroom was often so small, it really limited my options in terms of my A-roll set. And so the solution I came up with was to use a backdrop. But the end goal was always to create a really nice A-roll set with props in the background, little accent lights and so forth. And just recently, this became a reality. 
So as you can see, the heart of this A-roll set is this matte black wall behind me, which obviously wasn't here at the start. That's only something that's come about in the past month or so, but this wall was actually built as a fake wall of sorts to section off the storage space behind it. The idea is if we were to ever sell and move from this house, technically we could remove this wall and all of the storage and take it with us. But I've always loved having a moody black background, but of course I also wanted some texture to it as well, hence why we went with these V-groove panels. But then once that was installed, it was just about set dressing. So we brought in some plants. I got this really nice bookshelf from Temple and Webster. And then I kind of just searched online and at a bunch of thrift stores to find props and vintage goods that might look good in the background. Any that I didn't use for this A-roll set, well, they'll scatter throughout the studio as you'll see later on. And as you can see, once you bring in all of the lights, this is the end result. And I've got to say, whilst the wall itself, along with all of the decor looks really nice as you walk through the front door, having a dedicated set and backdrop that looks like this, it just makes me very happy. Now, speaking of lights, one thing that I did recently was I took this backdrop pole that I had previously been using with C stands and I mounted it between these two wooden beams in the roof. And I've used these grip clamps to attach both the Godox SL60W with a snoot and the Amaran 100X from Aperture also with a snoot right next to each other. The light from Aperture then points down on the backdrop for a bit of an accent on the wall behind me. And then the Godox light acts as my backlight, illuminating this side of my face. And then I've also got the Aperture MC mounted directly above where I sit, also using a grip clamp, which is acting as my top or hair light. And so because of this backdrop pole mounting solution, I've essentially eliminated three light stands in one go. That was actually a recent installation that I did myself and I was pretty chuffed about it. Aside from that, it's just the Aperture 120D Mark II with a newer softbox attached, mounted on a C stand acting as my key light. And that's the entire lighting setup for this A-Roll set. And so then we come to the wall on the other side of the camera. And this is perhaps stealing a little too much from Chris Howe, but I'm calling it the refill wall. So the main two components of this wall are firstly the charging bay, which as you might have already figured out, I got heavy inspiration from Becky and Chris's charge wall build. And I'll link to their step-by-step -step tutorial where they covered the entire process of setting this up down in the description below. But I've always wanted my own wall mounted charging station for the longest time, but I just haven't been able to do it because up until this point, I was renting. Now under that charging station is this Fijalbo shelf unit from Ikea. Again, I stole the idea for this from Becky and Chris, but even though the studio is in the backyard of my house and I can obviously quickly walk into the house at any time, I also wanted a space in the studio where I could put a kettle and some tea and coffee as well as a couple of mugs so that in the event that my family are not at home, I just put on a quick pot and stay in the warmth of my studio. Now, what I also really liked about this shelving unit is that it has this caged off section at the bottom. And it just worked out that that was placed right near one of the network ports in this studio space. And so that's actually where I've been keeping my DS220 Plus NAS from Synology. I spoke about this NAS in my previous desk setup video. And since then it's been up and running like a charm. But what's made it so great in particular is that Seagate were kind enough to hook me up with not one, but two 18 terabyte IronWolf Pro hard drives, both of which have been amazing. Now 18 terabytes in and of itself is more than I'll probably ever need for my current workflow. And so because I have two 18 terabyte drives, I've actually set it up in a RAID 1 configuration so that if one of the drives was to die, the other has a mirrored copy of it. And so I can continue working no problems at all and just replace the drive that died. Look, suffice it to say, it's only been a few months, but the Iron Wolf Pro drives from Seagate have been performing beautifully. And if you wanna learn more about them, then I'll leave a link to their website down below. Now, next to that shelving unit is actually my wife and I's old LG TV, which I've repurposed, I've had it wall mounted in the studio, and I also had the electrician install a little HDMI plate down the bottom. The idea is that whenever I set up my camera to film a roll or a top down shot, I can actually run an HDMI extension cable into this wall plate and have whatever I'm filming displayed nice and large on the TV, which is super helpful for nailing focus in particular. But then I've actually also used TVs in the past for filming some of the B-roll in my phone reviews. So having this TV in here will enable me to do that once more. It's also just nice to have a TV in the studio that could be used for watching content on. And in fact, to add to the mood, I installed one of these LED strip lights from Nanoleaf behind it, which I think adds a nice touch. Now, remember that autonomous standing desk that was featured in my previous desk setup video? Yeah, well, 
I actually kind of ran out of space for a separate computer station once I redesigned the layout of this studio, but I did want to repurpose that autonomous desk. And so I picked up four of these caster wheels that fit right into the base of the frame, meaning I can wheel this bad boy around all day long. And this has now become the desk at which I film all of my top down shots. Now, up until just recently, I'd actually just set the tripod up in such a way where the camera was looking down. And as long as I used a 50 mil lens or tighter, you wouldn't see the tripod legs. But instead, I've actually just recently switched over to using two C-stands, two boom poles screwed together, and a heavy duty grip head to mount my camera above the table. This means my camera is now mounted separately from the table. And so if I accidentally bump the table when shooting, it won't ruin my shot like it used to. Now, finally, for this portion of the room, I was actually having some issues with sound bouncing around. And so Elgato were kind enough to hook me up with a bunch of their wave panels, which I've mounted strategically on this wall and the one next to me. I do also use a moving blanket attached to two C-stands right next to me when filming A-roll. So that combined with the wave panels from Elgato have really helped to reduce some of those nasty audio reflections. Okay, so then that brings us to the desk setup. And this is largely the same desk setup that was featured two desk setup videos ago, but with a few new inclusions. Firstly, this new chair, which I recently picked up from Ikea. It's called the Aleph Jewel, which I'm sure I'm mispronouncing, but I've had this chair pinned on my Pinterest feed for like five plus years. And I finally took the plunge and picked it up. It is on the slightly pricier side of things in terms of Ikea chairs, but I just love the look of it. The genuine grain brown leather looks amazing with my desk setup, and it's actually the comfiest chair that I've used so far. And then the other thing that's new is this Fijalbo wall shelf, also from Ikea, mounted directly above the monitor, and I've obviously dressed that with these various decor items. Now, along with the wave panels that Elgato sent me, they were also kind enough to send me their Stream Deck system, which has a bunch of tools active at the moment, like shortcuts to screen recording, muting the system volume on my PC and so forth. Plus, I am thinking about getting back into live streams a little later this year, so having a super robust system for that will be incredible. Everything else is largely the same or a combination of the last few desk setup videos that I've made, which I will, of course, link below. But this is where I spend 70 to 80% of my working week. And so not only did I want this space to be comfortable, but I also wanted it to look really nice. The second to last is what I'm calling the corner. I know, very creative. This was previously a bit of dead space in the studio, but given it's next to where I sit and also one of the first places you look at when you walk into the studio, I wanted to put a little more thought into the design of it. So this plant is a rubber fig that my wife bought me for my birthday at the start of this year. I've also wall mounted my Maton acoustic guitar using one of these Hercules guitar hangers. And then after a bit of hunting around, I bought these three artworks from Society6, which I think look really nice in combination with each other. All right, last, but certainly not least, we have the storage bay. Now, as I mentioned earlier in this video, after moving into our house, we quickly started realizing that we were running out of storage. And so as a result, we decided that we needed to put some sort of storage solution into the studio. We thought about getting quotes to have builders come in and build a proper dividing wall, but eventually we just decided to buy five of these large garage storage shelves, plus one of these workbench style shelving systems as well, and then set them up in a way so that they acted as like a pseudo walk-in storage solution. Now that was a real eyesore every time you walked into the studio. It was honestly the first thing that you saw. And so a very handy friend of ours not only came up with the solution of putting these V-groove panels over the top to act as a fake wall, but he actually offered to come and essentially do the whole thing for us. Thank you, Keith. Now I filmed that entire process and I feel like it was such a genius solution that it deserves its own video itself. So keep an eye out for that on the channel, but that really did complete this studio space beautifully. Not only did I gain this amazing new black backdrop to film all of my A-roll shots with, but we now have more than enough storage for me to store not only all of my extra studio gear in, but also a heap of stuff from the house as well. And one really cool new addition to this storage space is that I just installed these LED strip lights along the top of the main areas that I'm always accessing. I actually got sent some kits from Govi and they work pretty well. They have an app so I can turn the lights on or off from my phone, which is pretty handy. Plus I can obviously control all of the colors from the app as well. 
Now, as you can see, there is a lot of gear in this studio. And whilst I am, of course, insured, I prefer not to have anything happen in the first place. And so I just recently installed one of these Emilab EC2 wireless home security cameras, which I can monitor on my phone at all times, and it'll alert me to any activity as well. I actually installed a second one at the front of our house, which I use to track any deliveries that need to be signed for. And I've got to say, if you're looking for ease of use, this system is a really solid solution. No wires and potentially no drilling depending on where you're installing them. And this made for a really simple install process. And so there you have it. That is the complete tour of my YouTube studio. And it's been a long journey, but I'm massively blessed to now have this space to work in full time. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing how it all ended up. But the renovation series is not over. I've still got a few more episodes up my sleeve. So if you enjoyed this one, make sure you hit subscribe and turn on notifications so that you don't miss out whenever I release new episodes. Aside from that, thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.